Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Kieran Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today we have an art journal tutorial for you. It's part of the napkin series. Here's the gorgeous napkin. It's called Angelic Chic Napkin, and you can get this at ninniesnapkins.com. Check out the affiliate links below. So I water cut some of the images out. And the joy with the mat with napkins is that you can pick and choose what elements of the napkin that you want and you usually have multiple images so you can build it up. So I've water cut this part that I want and then I'm just playing with some possible sentiments from my sentiment pack one and two just for placement and composition of my uh, focal image. I want to make sure that I have room to put whatever quote or sentiment that I'm going to do on there. So now that I have that finalized in my head, I'm just doing a little bit more editing and water cutting. Happy with the placement of the image, the napkin image. I'm taking an ink tense pencil and lightly going around this because I am going to be putting some texture paste through a stencil to go underneath the flower elements of this. And I just wanna know basically where that is. Now this stencil is a six inch stencil, it's called Lilacs. And even though the flowers in the napkin are not Lilacs, the scale matches. And I love using this Lilac stencil behind any floral focal point. It just adds that extra dimension to it and really bumps it up. So I'm using TCW modeling paste here through the stencil and I'm just building it up, adding more or less to cover the basic area that I've marked out where I know the napkins are going to go. It's not exactly a perfect science, but it's as close as, as you can get. And because it's going to be underneath the napkin, I don't need to get absolute perfect uh, modeling paste. It doesn't have to be pristine. So I'm just not waiting for it to dry and I'm just lightly putting it over here just to get more of that texture. The goal of this is to add texture. I will be using this lilac stencil later on. So I'm still tweaking and editing the image, what parts I don't want, as I'm finalizing exactly what I'm going to do. So here I've used two of the four images that come with one napkin, and I will be taking a little bit more of this floral one off of this napkin. So I've used three. And again, that's the joy with the napkins because you typically get either two identical images or four. And it allows you to, as I said earlier, build your own composition and make it unique to yourself. Now you can see that the napkin isn't going exactly where I put the modeling paste, but I'm okay with that. Some of that's going to be underneath the angel. Some of it's going to show through on the background it's all good. It all works together in the end. Now I love the colors of this napkin, but gray is not a color that I typically work with. So that is giving me a bit of a challenge, but it's good to challenge yourself every once in a while because it forces you to solve problems, to think out of the box, and you're going to grow as an artist. So here I'm just playing with the composition. How do I want this to go? Because it's not over till it's over and sometimes you do change your mind. Now I'm gluing this down with liquid matte medium. You can take gel medium and thin it with water and I do that as well. I'm putting it underneath and then I'm going on top. Now remember, the napkin gets very fragile when it um, gets wet. Now I'm gluing this down here. I just showed you, if you want to rewind, a page that I did earlier. Now I did the background completely first and then glued the napkin down. And 
too much of the background showed through the angel and it got very dark. So this time I'm gluing it down before I colorize the background. In the end, that first page that was a learning page, I won't say failed because I learned how to improve. And the images that I used here used up one napkin. And I didn't edit all of this fussing out of here because I wanted to show you that there is a lot of second guessing and thinking about it behind the scenes. So now I wanted to add some interest to the background. And because this seemed to read very Victorian, I went through my stencils and I grabbed a couple stencils that I thought were rather Victorian in feel. And this one is called Damask. It's a crafter's workshop one. And I am just taping up. I just want this one small motif. So I'm masking off the area around it and I am just going to stencil that on. And I just want some interest in the background. So I'm stenciling on with black. This is not going to be up front. This is not going to be overly seen. And in the end, I don't know, you know, hints of it do peek through, but that's about it. But it does help me get from point A to point B. I'm putting some of the stenciling I'm putting that's going off the page. So you get half of the image or a quarter of the image. And as I'm doing this, I'm getting very excited about the background. I'm really liking the effect. Now this is, you know, we have the colorization of the flowers and everything else is very monotone. It's black, white, and gray. Then I add that little motif in there just to fill some of the areas. But you see how I'm taking this larger stencil and I'm using just the bits that I want. So look at your stencils carefully, examine them and see what little parts you can utilize. It, you, it's really, you have how many different stencils inside one. So I'm taking a picture of this just to get a different perspective of it. Then I want, still going with that Victorian theme, I grab this quadrifoil stencil. Now this is a cake and cookie one, but there is a six inch one <coughs> and a 12 inch one. And I want this to be fairly light. I'm more going for that gray, that hint, um, you know, worn old Victorian wallpaper. And once I add this too, I'm just very, very excited. And part of me was almost ready to say, you know what, I'm gonna leave that background the way it is. I kind of like it, it's very different. But of course, I didn't stop here. I'm building up, adding a little bit more paint, a little, making it a little bit darker. Now the, I'm doing this on a 10 by 10 MDF board, but you can do this completely on a canvas panel or in an art journal page. Nothing would be 
different other than the substrate. You may have to change the composition to fit the shape of the page or the substrate that you use. So I have taken some of my gesso that has thickened over time, and this is a sink liner that I absolutely love using as a stamp. Now I'm stamping this image on top. It is adding pattern. It is adding glorious texture. Shelf liners, sink liners, bath mats, they all make perfect stamping, stenciling tools that you can use in your mixed media. And I love this one. Now, if you don't have thickened gesso, you can take modeling paste and mix it with regular gesso to thin it down to kind of get that medium um, texture. Now, I want to soften the napkin edges, get rid of some of that gray and put some gesso over the napkins in there to prepare it to take more paint. So I'm using a very small brush with some white gesso and I'm just dab, dab, dabbing a little bit just to push back, lighten some areas and blur the edges. I don't want the distinct edge. And I don't show all of this on camera, but I did want you to know that there was that step. So here, you know, around the head, I'm getting rid of the bits that don't seem to fit. And some of it I go over and give it a couple coats. I'm not too careful about making this perfectly smooth. I'm welcoming the texture. And as you can see, in, even in between the flowers, I'm just lightening it up a little bit. So this did take a little bit of time. Now I'm taking some gray paint with my white gesso and I'm just mixing it with my finger right on the canvas or right on the board and I'm just rubbing it lightly. I'm not sure how, what kind of background I want, but I'm just adding a little bit here and there. It's pushing back the patterning that's there. This was kind of my plan from the beginning. I don't want it all one tone, so I want some areas lighter, some areas darker. That always adds interest to your page or your piece. And when I finish this, I'm really liking the background, but no surprise here, I didn't stop there. gets too dark, add more gesso. Let it dry, come back, you can always lighten it up or as you see me doing here, just get a baby wipe and wipe it off if, you're going, if it gets a little too dark or it's not quite looking the way you want it to look. But I do like the way the black stenciling is showing through here, it's very subtle. Testing out the sentiments here. Now just painting in the gray a little bit more in some of the harder to reach areas. Now I wanna colorize or brighten up these flowers and give it the painterly effect. Now to get that plum color, I'm taking alizarin crimson, black, and my white gesso. The more I add white, the, the you get the lighter color. 
I'm not trying to be exact here and I'm not trying to actually paint flowers. I want abstract flowers and I want to, again, build up the texture. So I'm kind of globbing the paint on. Remember, underneath this, we have that lilac stencil, which is adding texture, and this is adding just that other layer. I don't want this to end up looking exactly like what was on the napkin. I'm just using the same tones and the basic shape and using that as the guide for what I'm doing. So I'm adding some dark, some light, some medium tones. using just a small brush. Now I'm taking that lilac stencil and I'm stenciling on some of those flowers into the background. I wanted to introduce a little bit of that lilac color to the background and I apologize, this really isn't on um, in frame. but I did introduce that color a little bit. And I like the some of the motifs in the lilac match the motif of the sink liner that I used. It has a similar shape. And I'm just introducing that to the background. So it's like those flowers are further in the distance. Then I lo felt I lost some of this quadrifoil, so I'm adding that. This may be a case of, I didn't know when to stop. I love, love, love where the piece ended up, but I think I would have loved it equally well had I stopped at different points. And every every time you stop, you you know, that's where you make it different. I'm edging with black paint, kind of smudging the edges. And the background's not busy enough. I want to add some script. So this is the reflection stamp, Tim Holtz stamp. And again, the stamps and stencils, they'll be in the links below in one of my affiliate areas. And I'm stamping with black acrylic paint here. Then it seemed to get too dark, so I'm adding more of this sink liner stamp with the thickened gesso. The textures and the patterns that are on this piece are amazing. I absolutely love them. The photographs don't do the finished piece justice at all. Recently, I bought a glass top for my entire table. I had it cut to size for my craft table and I put it on. So now it's seamless and I can, it's easy clean up with the paint and I can do this all the mixing and everything. Now I'm splattering with silver paint. I needed a little bit of bling, but gold in my mind would not work well with the colors. It's not something that necessarily you're, you're picking up in the photos, but in real life, it just adds that little extra something. I covered up the angels because I didn't want the splatter on them. Now my sayings, I printed off a couple of the sayings that I narrowed it down to on the coffee paper, and this is tissue paper. And I'm putting the doll side up and I'm going to tape it onto the sheet. Now I'm keeping well inside the page. 
And when you do that, it tends to work rather well. And then I'm going to put this in the paper tray the way that mine feeds in. And I will print this sentiment on the tissue paper. Once it prints, I have discovered that it's easier to cut it by leaving the tissue paper on and having the backing of the copy paper. And then I'm just pulling off the tissue paper and then that can go there. That's gonna allow the background to see through. Now I want to just darken some areas, add a little bit of shading. So I'm using my General's charcoal pencil around the angel, just very sketchily. I'm not trying to be too precise. And then I'm edging a little bit more. I want that smudged vintage kind of look. And I'm also doing that around the texture that I stamped with the, the thickened gesso. And you can see how it got a lot darker as I kept going. I'm going outlining it. Some of it I smudge, some of it I don't. Doing a little sketching with the charcoal pencil, the medium on the flowers, just adding another element. And remember there, that texture underneath is really adding to it as well. Now I'm spray, spraying this with Spectrafix. You need to spray it with a workable fixative to set the charcoal before you add any wet medium. And I'm, before I glue down the sentiment with the fluid matte medium, I don't want to reactivate it. So I gave it several spray, sprays with the Spectrafix, which is one that you can spray inside and it doesn't have a scent. It's non-chemical, it's all natural. Now I chose the script font, do, do small things with great love. And yes, it isn't overly visible, but that's kind of the look I was going with. I wanted it to be there, but I didn't want it to be, your eyes to be drawn to it instantly. So I deliberately tried to make it secondary. Had a little bit of trouble, it fell apart. And I wet the tissue paper first before I put it into the wet matte medium, fluid medium. And I just find that helps it goes, go very translucent. So all the white of the tissue paper just dissipates and all you see is the background. So it looks like I just wrote on top. Close-ups of the finished project are coming up. Thank you so much for joining me. Follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Oh, I love that background right there. And again, go get creative.